think about it, it's very rare if you're given the opportunity to find the nearest wall and bang your head against it that you would choose to do that. But uh, I'm going to give you, you can vote, uh, leave a comment below. Would you choose to bang your head against the wall or play a J6 pinball machine? I'm just trying to work out who actually has time on their hands to even construct and put this together. Uh, but apparently at CPAC, uh, amongst the empty halls, this is what the clapping seals are really into. And now let's play. Who okay. would be dumb enough apart from a CPAC anorak to buy this? Get it done. When you need a pinball, it's, it's like, don't, you know, try to hit the ball, Let's don't lose the ball. Yeah, yeah. 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 As you start developing skills, there's like strategies, there's different game modes. It, 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 it actually can be a narrative, so you actually can yeah. be playing through a game, I think, right? So the game modes in this game is stop the steal, fake news, peaceful protest, it's a setup, bad at bad faith, political prisoners. And as you play through each one of those modes, different videos from J6 comes up on the top screen. Get it done. And the goal is to get the high scores. This 1023 alleging a bribe with the Biden family. And that whistleblower told us at the time that he did not know whether or not that bribe had actually been consummated, but merely the existence of a 1023 that the FBI wasn't providing to Congress uh, warranted further review. Now, when we initially asked for this 1023, we were told by the Department of Justice, it's got all these national security implications. We have to protect this confidential human source. So now what we have to decipher is which arm of the Department of Justice was telling us the truth. Because in these indictments that you see from Weiss, there are all these allegations that Smirnoff could not have possibly observed these instances of bribery because he wasn't in the countries stated. But when we uh, when we were debriefing the U.S. attorney from Pittsburgh, uh, we got a very different version of events. Uh, Scott Brady told us that they could verify those travel records. So we got to figure so out just, which part of the DOJ was telling the truth and which was What Ken Buck is saying was that. Congress, people in Congress were warned that this confidential source, uh, what he was providing could not be verified. Is that part something that you were ever told? That, what, what Directly. You had to say? And so given that, uh, should that not have produced some more caution on the part of your colleagues, James Comer, uh, Jim Jordan, as they talked about the value of this, the information that this source had provided? I think what they talked about was the extent to which DOJ was entangled with this particular source, the number of cases he'd been involved in, the number of successful prosecutions they, I mean, they based this, off that information. They called this, I, I want to play for you what they sure. said, but they called it basically a linchpin of the investigation. Listen. The most corroborating evidence we have is that 1023 form from this highly credible confidential human source. Every day, this bribery scandal becomes more credible. We already know the president took bribes from Burisma. I also want to add, betraying your country is treason. This, ladies and gentlemen, is gold. This is direct evidence of naked corruption and bribery. The evidence is overwhelming, Maria. The, you know, the nails in the coffin. Was that irresponsible? A few of those characterizations might have been a, a little, a little oversauced. But I, I do think that that the the but, bribery I mean, can also go to a family member, right? But the reason is, I think I it's still bribery, though, Abby, Look, is because if you want to bribe a seventy-five-year-old man, you pay their kids. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. You just acknowledged there's actually no evidence of bribery when it comes to what this confidential source had. You, to, I did not acknowledge that. You, you, you acknowledge that there's no there's no proof. There, there's there's reports of, of bribery, but there's actually no proof of bribery well, I, actually being I think, consummated. I think that when you the, pay you, someone's family member in order to influence their decision, that that is a bribe. Now, I recognize that that's probably not a view of bribery that's going to lead to an impeachment in the House. But yeah, like, how do you think you bribe old people? You pay their kids well, and their family look, members. I mean, you can, in your mind, think about it however you want. But, but, from, but a, yeah, from, like, a, from a constitutional and even from a legal perspective, that's... You well, I don't think so. I think you, you should read the Foreign Corrupt Practices look, Act again. I just again. want to ask you, though. You, you know that in the, this... in the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act, payment to a family member can constitute here's a bribe. What, here's what you said, Congressman. This was in October at a private fundraiser. You said, I don't believe that we are endeavoring upon a legitimate impeachment of Joe Biden. They're trying to engage in a forever war of impeachment. And like so many of our forever wars, it will drag on forever and end in a bloody draw. It, it, honestly, it seems like maybe you were right the first time. When you've heard me speak about issues important to me, uh, I haven't led with impeachment. I talk about the budget and single-subject spending bills and term yeah. limits and so things they, like that. So should your colleagues uh, 
given that, according to Jim Jordan, this was the most corroborating piece of evidence that they had. Should they drop this impeachment well, at this point? I disagree with Jordan that this is what's most corroborating. I think what's most corroborating are the payments to Hunter Biden and Frank Biden and James Biden. Like, I was deposing James Biden, and the way that they took money from the Chinese government would make your skin crawl. Now, that's admittedly James Biden, not Joe Biden. But I do believe when these foreign governments are loading up the entire Biden family apparatus with cash, they're not doing so to, to extract some sort of skill or service from these ne'er-do-well Biden. They're doing it to influence Joe Biden. Everything that you've described is an inference. It's basically saying, well, it, it must be. But there's actually no, you haven't actually given well, any proof of what well, you're wait, alleging. Okay, but so Abby, why absence, do you think Burisma was paying the Hunter Biden? The absence, you think they were paying him to figure out where to go buy crack in L.A.? In the absence, I mean, they were paying of, actual proof, in the absence of actual proof, that, that is, is you proof. said earlier, is this impeachment inquiry even going anywhere if you cannot provide enough evidence? Jonathan Turley, a conservative lawyer, he was brought before the committee to testify about this. He said... There's not enough evidence to support articles of impeachment against Joe Biden. Yeah, when Jonathan Turley said that, we should have asked Jamal Bowman to pull a fire alarm. It was a devastating moment for House Republicans. But uh, I think the impeachment inquiry will, will have to rely on deciphering whether or not it was Weiss or Brady accurately assessing the travel that's of what the, that's what the impeachment inquiry ought to be well, about? Or shouldn't it, it, it be about, it, about whether or not you actually have proof of bribery? Well, well, let's assume that Brady's right, that Smirnoff indeed was in these places making these observations. And I'm not saying he is. I'm saying it's a contradiction. In that event, you could literally have a situation where Smirnoff is being arrested to facilitate the cover-up. Now, again, I think that requires us reviewing the travel records and getting more transparency out of the Department of Justice, more than they've been willing to give us to date. You find more women going to those places with shorts than you will women with pants and dresses put together. Try it. If you got time, try it. Have your boy go up there and try it. Just watch for it. Have your girl go up there and watch for it. And you know, uh, I, I used to say this. And I, I haven't said this in a long time. You ready? I said, if, if you dress like that and you get raped and I'm on the jury, he's going to go free. Now, you don't like, do you? I'm right, though. I can't help you like it. I'm right. Because, you know, a man's a man. I'm trying to be respectful. I promise you, I really am. Uh, but the ignorance and, should we say, stupidity of Dim Scott and the guy next to him is to infinity. Uh, the guy next to him, more commonly known as Diaper Don, uh, claims he, he's been to the best schools, had the best education. Yet it would appear basic history has slipped the guy's head. And with regards, Dim Scott, where does... Just how does he cope? You know, when he's away from politics and amongst family, do they just say, Dim, embarrassing? Tim Scott can't have any friends. If he did, they would rescue him now. He reminds me of a, a pile of poo waiting to be flushed. Sorry, but there's no other way. I look at Tim Scott and I just think, no. In fact, that's an insult to pigeon poo when you look at Tim Scott. What is he doing? I don't know if he has any credibility. I mean, this is what Tim Scott has done. He randomly decided he was getting engaged. Um, he's kind of booted Nikki Haley in the back. And he's now there like chucking and jiving. And I've said this before. And if you take offense, I don't care. I really don't. If this was back in the day, uh, Tim Scott is the type of person that would be up at the big house going, yes, master, and all of that stuff, thinking that he is a little bit special to anybody else who has the same colour skin as he is. And if you say anything, he says, you're being racist, you can't say that. No, Tim Scott would sell his own trousers down the river. He's power hungry. That's what it's all about. Him, him, him. No wonder he gets on with former guy. And he is so convinced. I think he thinks he's going to be the next vice president. Him and Tulsi Gabbard. Or whatever her surname is. Sorry if I pronounced it wrong. I mean, I'm looking at what's going on. And it's actually moved so far away from policy. So far away from ideology. This is not about fiscal matters. This is not about should we put more finance into housing or more finance into health? Uh, how should we do our schools? This is just all buffoonery. It's like they're auditioning to be on a reality show that Fox News are putting on. This has nothing to do with politics. I promise you. It's 
We might as well let the truckers control the Republican Party. It's like the more dumb, the more extreme, the more further away from reality, <clears throat> the people are given a seat. Let me tell you, for example, um, you have to have budgets. doesn't matter what level of government you are, you have to have budgets. Tim Scott would have no idea how to start explaining budgets to people. No idea. It's like, has it really come down to this? Who can get the dumbest headlines? It's just a reality show. That's what's going on. Nothing to do with even ideology. I said this all along. If you go back to Liz Cheney, Liz Cheney's uh, fiscal policy is probably more right wing and more conservative than anything Trump will come up with. But she believes in the Constitution. And it's all victimhood. I was going through uh, CPAC. It's all poor me, poor, poor, poor. And they never answer any questions. Tim Scott never answers any questions. Never. Not that he's posed any questions. It's all softballing. And they're all scared to actually take on Trump. I was told by somebody, the reason MSNBC, uh, CNN, Fox, don't ask her, well, Fox, don't ask any questions is because they won't be called upon again. So they have to play the game. They actually forget that people's livelihoods, uh, people's schools, health, all of that is affected by the politicians that are there representing them. And of course, you've now got the situation where Elon Musk is piling on the manure. So basically, anything Joe Biden's ever said is wrong and everything that President, uh, for a loser guy, Diaper Don has said is right. 91 felonies. People actually believe that his 91 felonies are all made up. They do. That's what they think. And what I'd like to know is how many of these people think if they had a real problem, like there were people outside Mar-a-Lago, I don't know if they've got jobs or whatever, how many people think if it was the other way around, if they had a problem and they put a call into uh, Mar-a-Lago asking for former guy to come and help them out, he'd be there. Nope. He's not even interested in his own wife, Melania Trump. He was asked a question the other day. Will Melania Trump be joining you on the campaign? Didn't even answer it. Nobody says anything. It is crazy. But I've worked out what happens is. So, let me give you a slide. It's, it's a post-it, yeah? Post-it. There are the intrinsic details that the average person that watches Fox uh, will take in when it comes to Trump. They've already made their mind up. Not interested in the truth. If Trump tells them that tomorrow is dark and the evening will be light, they will believe it. And if it doesn't happen, deep state. Conspiracy theory, because Jim Jordan said so on Fox News. And I've, uh, yeah, I pay Elon Musk for my blue tick. And look at me. Yes, I can agree with everything Tucker Carlson, ah, Alex Jones says. And if you say anything, well, you're wrong. What do you know? Or as the maggot said, you British people, keep your nose out of it. Well, Liz Trust turned up at CPAC today, and uh, you can ask anybody. She was right up there with uh, Ron DeSantis. Disaster. It's true. That's not me making it up. Disaster. How long did she last? 21 days or something and gone. Anyway, Tim Scott. the uh, answer somebody one person please in the comment section now tell me what the heck was the question <laughs> Tim Scott I challenge you the press look into their backgrounds find anything they've done in their lives their 50 plus years lives that's racist we didn't have to wait long or go. And now let's play. play. Is this I was dumb? Social media ignorant? FOS or all three? As you see, black support eroding uh, from Joe Biden. Account, this is connecting with black America because they love sneakers. They're into sneakers. They love the, you know, this is a big deal, certainly in, in the inner city. So when you have Trump roll out his sneaker line, they're like, wait a minute, this is cool. He's reaching them on a level that defies and is above politics. The culture always trumps politics. And Trump understands culture like no politician I've ever seen. Question for you on that point, though. Yeah. Will the people that are excited about the sneakers and excited about Donald Trump, 
Will that translate into them going out and voting for Donald Trump? Well, anybody willing to put 400 bucks down for a pair of sneakers? Yeah, I think that's commitment and love. I it's hope something. You're right. It's something. It's affection. If you want to know what Trump campaign staffers think about you, just watch Fox News like this weekend when they gushed over Donald Trump's new ploy for money. A limited edition series of gaudy gold $400 Trump sneakers. And like they always do on Fox, somebody we said the quiet part year. out loud on what the big sneaker strategy is really all about. Had. Even the sneaker you thing. I was on social media last night. Very interesting. As you see, black support eroding from Joe Biden. This is connecting with black America because they love sneakers. They're into sneakers. They love the, you know, this is a big deal, certainly in, in the inner city. So when you have Trump roll out his sneaker line, they're like, wait a minute, this is cool. He's reaching them on a level that defies and is above politics. The culture always trumps politics. And Trump understands culture like no politician I've ever seen. We're going to have a great year. Seriously? Why didn't I think of this when I ran the RNC? Let's see. Wish you all a very happy Black folks love sneakers, uh, we're gonna have a and we can year. paint them gold. Up, the this this can't the miss. We've ever had. Trust me, it's a big a miss. And they ugly as hell. We have a great year. We if you want to speak like democracy is getting eroded and the institutions are crumbling, stop. It's I not. Want to wish you all a very this country has gone through hell and back a lot. Uh, we had, a we had, year, let's go all the way back to a civil war where we were getting completely torn apart. Our institutions stood strong. I we go through World War I and World War II. We go through the racism year. and segregation of the 60s. Up, you go through a place like 1968, years we've ever had. where some of America's great voices are literally getting assassinated in front of us on television. And, and people said, it's over, America's year. done. We but we stood, the institutions are ready for one of the best years strong. we've ever had. We went through 9-11, we went through a, a very pandemic, happy Thanksgiving. the institution uh, stood strong. Let me put it a different way. Assholes come and go, but America is here today. First word of the night. I want to wish you all a As you know, the left is trying to shame Christians. Year. They try and shame us. Front load us. washers do not require the tub to fill been very busy. water like top load washers. Fighting and washers. Front load washers. Front load washers. I'm taking it for you, and I'm so honored to take it. Front washers. I'm being indicted for you, as I say. I'm being indicted for over and over and over. As the Bible says, blessed are the peacemakers, right? Blessed are the peacemakers. And I will be, I promise, I will be your peacemaker in more ways than what you think. I will be your peacemaker and I will bring a worship that will not end at the door with a public school. And I will support it. World War III, very close to World War III, which we forced unfortunately had to force into some schools it should be very easy you would think it would be very I easy but it wasn't god, but we did it. god is here and I god is watching god is watching and god probably can't believe what he's seeing i'm going to end the so-called department of education we might have one desk one person just to make sure everyone's speaking english let's got to have a little bit of regulation you know let's Let's try and keep it so that you can only, like, that we're going to focus on some English. But after that, you can go ahead and do what you're going to do.